of a sudden you just made four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. When you're talking about doing deals, one seventy five, two thirty, two fifty four. What I'm experiencing and what I, what's coming to mind for me is this reminds me of being uh, in the business in my first couple of years dealing with a lot of the smaller investment deals, right? Like again, when you're dealing in these types of price points, one thing obviously that's nice is that these typically should close fairly quickly, right? You should be looking at a sub, you know, a sixty day or 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 less uh, time frame for closing. However, keep in mind that obviously you're still only making five or maybe ten thousand a deal. So it's going to be very difficult to make a serious living, right? Like even if you close 10 deals, um, you'd make 70 grand at this average price. Point, right? You'd make, you know, even if you average 250, you'd make seven and a half, seven and a half grand a deal, 90 grand a year. If you closed on a deal a month, 10 grand, uh, 10, uh, sorry, if you close 10 deals, 75 grand. So what I am recommending, what's your biggest metro near you? Metro, that's uh, like city? Yeah, your biggest city near you. Tri-Cities, which is an hour and 10 minutes away. So Tri-Cities. Um, let's take a look at it real quick. I'm actually going to bring this up on my... And just so I can give you a little bit, that's uh, three cities together, which is Richland, Pasco, and Kenwood. Uh, but there is multi-million dollar deals here in Yakima. But uh, from what I've seen so far is the, a very select group of brokers that sort of already have control over those deals. Sure. Well, let's talk and about themselves. What, so I'm what, finding what county, what like county in, are you in? Uh, English, um, uh, Yakima County. So what I would recommend is the following, okay? Big big first adjustment, which I hear you loud and clear. Listen, those brokers are in every area across the country. Mm -hmm. There's not an area that, quote, doesn't have a top broker in it, right? Every area across the country, and no matter what city, you can throw a pin at it. You can close your eyes and throw a pin at the country, right? You're going to land on a city that has a top broker selling in that area. However, there's still going to be, I'm not saying that you're going to target $20 million deals. I'm not, that's not my intention, right? I, that's not even my personal target, okay? I don't target $20 million deals. Our niche is a million to 10 million, okay? <laughs> but we burn and churn a dozen a month. So like we just rip through deals as fast as we can. And we're trying to grow that obviously to dozens a month. So keep in mind, like, you know, I'm not trying to tell you to sell $20 million deals and, and compete with these huge organizations, right? And deal with these people's connections. I'm saying, I don't want you to, I want us to try to get your average sales price because if you want to make a million bucks a year, I want to get your average sales price from roughly two and change to like a million bucks. Yeah, that would be like around a million bucks. And again, I'm not trying to. Obviously, it'd be nice if you sold. I'll give you a quick example. Today, we're about to we're about to have an accepted offer on an eight and change million dollar deal. We're only getting two percent. We're gonna make 160 grand on that deal, uh, which I'm not saying is a little bit of money, but I'm saying I make 160 thousand dollars on doing a five percent commission deal on three million dollars. You know, a three point one million dollar deal. I'm gonna make the same amount of money on as I'm making on this eight million dollar deal. Okay, just because the commission percentages are off. So I'm. Saying, mm -hmm. even if you were doing let's just say a million dollar deal but you were able to represent both uh, both sides you can make 50k a deal i'm not saying that we're not going to sell some of these smaller properties i still sell smaller properties last week we closed on two deals one for 560 555 and one for 890 but we made over 100 grand total between two of those tiny deals because we make sure we make you know six percent commission just about roughly our average is like five 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 seven percent wise but we also wholesale a lot of deals but you know just on, on the broker side five 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 seven so when you're making those types of percentages on every deal it obviously makes it much easier to make substantial money obviously look you're double ending the one for or trying to double end the one for 230 which is great but i would i would do two things your prospecting list needs to be more towards i would prospect three different counties yakima county what was the county for the tri-cities uh benson county benson county great that's another one what's one more county near you the reason why i say this is that instead of focusing on a town we focus on three counties because what will happen here is that we are going to have enough properties to call on which by the way i understand something i live in south beach new jersey uh, south beach florida okay makes my wife happy i sell properties in several states all across the country i never see the properties face to face now i'm not saying you don't eventually have to go see a property but I'm saying I just want you to understand you can sell properties anywhere and not ever see a property. That is a reality. Mm -hmm. Now, very obviously at the very beginning of your career while you're working and trying to build relationships, I would tell you to drive two hours to go show a property. Don't get me wrong. It's obviously more convenient when it's five minutes down the road. No, nope, of course. For you to make five times or 10 times as much money, you could drive an hour. So mm -hmm. keep in mind that like it is so much more uh, uh, profitable to be prospecting on properties between 500,000 and 5 million than it is to be calling on properties that are worth 175 grand or 250 grand. It is substantially more profitable. Where you, like if you did 10 closings, think about it like this. If you did 10 closings, averaging a million bucks a piece, double ending each one at 5% average, you're making half a million a year. And that's at a million bucks, which instead of closing on 10 deals like you are right now, you're you're gonna average out and you're probably gonna make 60 to 70 grand. So you can make almost eight times as much money. You could literally make 
more money doing two closings at a million bucks than you are right now doing the three deal at uh, the smaller prices, right? So yeah. I just want you to keep in mind that like, I want you to see this as, of course, I want to get you to 10 closings a year. That'd be fantastic. I want to check that box together, right? I want to do that. Just keep yeah. in mind, my goal is just to help you get your average price point up. Now look, next year, it might only be 400 or 500 grand. That's okay. I just want you to realize it's all about, can we slowly increase your average sales price and can we slowly increase your average commission percentage? Can we slowly increase your average sales price, right? Those are the three things. Sorry, and, and sorry, and, and slowly increase the amount of deals you close, right? So if you do, let's say next, let's say next year, you close on eight deals for 300K average, eight times 300K is 2.4 million. Let's say you average 3% commission across the board. 3% commission will put you at um, 72 grand. That would be 72K next year. Now the following year, we try to do it again. We're gonna try to, this time you're gonna end up closing 10 deals. This time your average price point is 500K and you average commission percentage is 4%. Now all of a sudden you went from 72 grand to doing 200,000 in income. And we slightly increase the amount of deals you close, yeah. slightly increase your average sales price, slightly increase your average commission. Third year goal, 12 deals, 800K average sales price, 5% average commission percentage. Now all of a sudden you just did 9.6 million times five. All of a sudden you just made $450,000, right? So it's just slowly paying attention. These are the three things that a lot of people don't pay attention to, right? Because all most people, well, two of these things most people don't pay attention to. The first thing that most people think about when I say, how do you make more money in real estate? Sell more real estate. For us, I want you to just to think about, I want to increase your average sales price and I want to increase your average commission percentage. So every time you close something, you're just going to log it in an Excel sheet and you're going to keep tabs on it and you're going to calculate how much is my average commission percentage. And your goal should be have an average overall for the year of above 4% for the next 12 months. And then the next 12 months, it'll be 4.5%. The next 12 months, 5%. The next 12 months, 5.5%. And you're going to slowly try to grow your average percentage, which means you're obviously going to be double ending the majority of your deals. Is that making sense so far? It makes sense. I'm following you. Right. The one thing, like, just to reiterate, one, we're going to be targeting a little bit larger of a demographic, uh, sorry, of a geographic location. Okay. So you're going to be trying to prospect three different counties, Yakima County, Benson County, and you're going to follow, you're, you're going to let me know about one more county, whichever one's fine. So you're going to choose three counties to prospect from now on. Those, That's your marketplace. Those are the main three counties going forward. Jersey is obviously like where I sell the vast majority of my real estate is a much more condensed state than most. Okay. You could drive I, I, you know, I have a house in the middle of the state. I can literally drive tip to tip either direction in less than two and a half hours, the entire state. You can't do that in Washington, right? Like it's going to take- I'm just going to plug this in. Yeah, I'm you're, listening. Good. you're good. So I'm saying I would start with three counties to start. And then overall, my goal is to have you start in the next three ish years. I see you as somebody who could be really working the whole state in spe in this two specific asset classes, multifamily or retail. But to begin with, you know, again, we're going to work on three different counties. We're going to start prospecting 500 K average assessed values to 5 million. There's a lot of opportunity here. Okay. You can easily get 1% or 2% market share. No matter, I don't give a shit how many brokers that are crushing it in those marketplaces, you can easily obtain a 1% market share, maybe 2% market share over a period of time, easily, mm -hmm. right? 10%, you might have to be a killer, right? Mm -hmm. And that might take you five or 10 years to do, right? But anybody, I believe, in my opinion, can do a 1% or 2% market share over a, maybe a two or three year period of time. And think about it. If there's hypothetically $500 million worth of transactions or maybe a billion dollars worth of transactions in these three counties overall for the entire year, you easily can sell 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year, right? That is possible. And you can make three or four or five percent on that, you know, 20 five percent on 20 million, dude, is a million bucks a year, right? So it is a very achievable number. Now, last thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna focus for the next nine minutes, is I want to talk about exactly what you're gonna do on a daily basis. So, so you have some guidance here. Okay. So we're gonna break down your schedule. Your schedule going forward, what time can you start prospecting? What time can you start hitting the phones? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Amazing. So what you're gonna do going forward is that from 8 a.m. to 8 15 a.m. You're going to do a meeting with yourself. It's going to call, you're going to call this as CEO time. You are the CEO of your business, right? Kevin LLC. You're going to do an 8 a.m. to 8 15 meeting with yourself every single day. That's you sitting at a desk with a blank sheet of paper and you're going to come up with a few different things for me. Number one is red flags. Most important thing is red flags, which is what is something you have to handle that if you don't handle it, a deal will die. Like red, so you, like this is like, go making sure your email's cleared up, making sure like, you know, not saying you go through emails this period of time, but you're looking at your emails like, hey, someone just, like I've had people like randomly in the middle of the night, they just sent a termination letter about a deal. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, 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 what's going on? I didn't hear about this. I will have like a red flag would be, I have to call the buyer who just killed this deal. So any red flags, it's number one. Number two, you're gonna write down any and all tasks that have to be done today. Any and all tasks that have to be, this is like your to-do list, okay? Now you're gonna have mm -hmm. any and all 
tasks that are going to be done, which is hypothetically, I have to call this person back, this person back, this person back. This could, this could be a seller lead, a buyer lead, an attorney, a title officer, a loan officer, whoever has to get a phone call from you today, period, end of story, you cannot leave your desk until this is handled. Last but not least on this list is your goals. Every single day you're gonna set your goals and you're also gonna do, uh, you're gonna put an intention on this on this piece of paper in front of you. I actually threw my, I, I had my cleaning, my cleaning ladies come to my house today. They threw out my post-it note, but I normally do a post-it note every single day. I have a whole stack of post-its over here. And every day I do my, um, I do my goals and my attention every day on this little post-it. So I just have it stuck to my laptop. I look at it every day, all day. And I just write the date on the top and I write down as an example. So like, let's just say today is Thursday. So just write Thursday 11-7 and then I'll write two leads. I mean, my handwriting is gonna suck, but two LOIs, mm -hmm. two accepted offers. This is literally what I write for myself every day. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you right now. So half the post-it looks like this. Today's date, two leads, two LOIs, two accepted offers. Now again, this is my goal. So that's my goal every day, right? I wanna generate two new leads. I wanna generate two, two letters of intent personally from me. And then I wanna get two accepted offers across my team every day. That is my intention every single day. Sometimes I get one, sometimes I get zero, sometimes I get two. But my intention every day is to get two. And I work my ass off to do that. Now at the bottom of it, I'll just, um, I'll write down my intention, okay? Which uh, is like your big vision for this year or for your life, okay? So as an example, I typically just do for like this year, I wanna do $20 million in commissions, right? And I wanna have $10 million cash in the bank. So this is what my post-it looks like every single day. My three goals at the top, I write down what my vision is or my goal for this year. I wanna do $20 million in commissions, that's for 2025. Uh, I wanna have $10 million cash in the bank. And then at the very bottom, I write win the day. That's just been my my saying. I've been saying that for almost 10 years now. But I literally just write this down every single day. I have it, I literally take the post-it, I put it on my laptop, I look at it all day, every day. And I, before I finish, my day i'm like hey did i did i do this obviously yeah. that's gonna be, that'll be the first thing then keep in mind uh and then all you're gonna do is once that's done so you wrote down your red flags you wrote down your tasks that have to be done today and you wrote down your goals and your uh your intention for the day you're gonna start hitting the phones at 8 15 a.m now you're gonna prospect until at least i'd say minimum is 12 noon mm -hmm. if you did not generate a lead you're gonna keep going to at least maybe two o'clock and then what you're gonna realize is that real estate commercial real estate is broken down into two different things my friend you have the lead generation and you have the offer generation Ge lead generation of seller leads and buyer leads and then the offer mm -hmm. generation which is pitching the seller opportunities to buyers and vice versa that right sense. that's it that's the whole game like this the industry is so freaking simplistic right i'm a two-time college dropout thank god it's not complicated i have to go out and generate some leads people who want to sell people who want to buy i spend the second half of my day marrying these people together that's the whole game right so do not overcomplicate it so anytime someone says oh but you have to post on social media oh but you have to you know write up you know uh, uh get business cards oh you have to do Dude, I, you got to generate leads. You got to get offers. You got to generate off. Uh, sorry, generate leads. You got to generate offers. That's it. And if whatever you're doing isn't one of those two things or getting you one step closer to either of those two things, you shouldn't be doing it right now. And that's till about two o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Now, what I highly recommend is that as you're building this database, I wrote down 8.15 to 12 noon as prospecting. What you can do is from 12 noon till 2 p.m. if you already generated a lead, you can take that two hour period. That's when you call your sphere of influence. That's when you call your database. That's when you follow up with your leads. That's when you like are continuously making sure your CRM system is cleaned up and you're following up with every single person you need to follow up with. One thing I didn't mention real fast, your red flags, that gets handled before you hit the phone. I, I didn't say that before, but I wanna make sure I mentioned that. I seen it in your video, yep. Okay, yeah. So your red flags, first thing that gets done. So the second you finish your meeting with yourself, I don't care if it's in two minutes, immediately you go to calling that attorney, calling that buyer who killed the deal, everything, right? Like you you get that done immediately. That is the very first thing we do, and then you get on the phones. So 12, to tw 12 noon to one, 12 to two-ish or so, you can do 12 until all your follow-up is completed. If not at the absolute latest, 2 p.m. is follow-up. And then from literally, we call it one or 2 p.m. whenever you finish your follow-up, till five o'clock at night, all right, or, or four, or you can say four slash 5 p.m. at night, that's pitching deals, which means you're calling up a buyer and saying, hey, John, I've got a great opportunity for you that you should buy, right? I mean, that's not my script, but you get my point, right? You're calling up buyers and you're gonna pitch them deals, right? Throughout the program, we're gonna dive into exactly what to say to those individuals, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna spend at least two or three hours a day, every single day, pitching deals. Now, what happens here is, Kevin, let's say you don't have a deal to pitch to a buyer. What should you do? Find another buyer, find another seller. Yeah, get back on the phones and start prospecting for more sellers. Now, last thing, 
from four o'clock till call it 8 p.m. at night. Okay, so from eight to eight is my window that I'll work, right? Eight o'clock to 8, p- 8 p.m. to, uh, sorry, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's my work day, right? So from when I finish pitching deals to my buyers till about eight o'clock at night, I will take the entire evening. This is when you go on meetings. This is when you go tour property. This is when you go show property. This is when you go shake people's hands, go to lunches, go to networking events, go to all that stuff from you know 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. The entire rest of the day is for getting shit done. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to a networking event at 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to go tour a property at 11 o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to make my calls and I'm going to pitch deals until four o'clock in the afternoon. And if a buyer says, hey, I'm available at, let's just say two o'clock, they're like, listen, the seller's not available until 5.30 tonight. Can you make that work? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I make sure that everyone's available to go tour a property when I'm available. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be, you know, look, if you have to go go tour a property, what I highly recommend is that you just, if if it's an absolute must and you can't make it work, if you have to do it, make sure it's done like at two o'clock or later. I highly recommend it should be four o'clock or later so you're doing all the... Yeah. The point is the later, the better. You don't want to affect your prospecting time. You need to make sure you're generating a lead every day, period, end of story.